project is now an integral part of uh, the Chinese new economic plan and its new role in the global um, uh, economy. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it opened the market for Chinese companies in, in a huge way. Uh, it uh, increased the trade between China and more than 65 countries, uh, representing 63% uh, of the world population and 10% of the world uh, uh, GDP. So in, in, in significance is a huge, in terms of investment, as we'll see later, is, is also very big. Now what is interesting is not just for Islamic uh, banks or Islamic finance, but for finance itself, uh, there is a lot of opportunity to kind of be within this uh, uh, Belt and Road Initiative uh, because it's not going to be uh, completed by just one country or one region or one continent. Uh, the sheer size of this is so large, uh, in trillions and trillions of dollars, uh, no one government can single-handedly uh, uh, compete to complete the Belt and Road Initiative. So you require not just public funds, which is government funds, but also private partnerships. And that's where PPPs are going to be very, very important in order to fund this. Uh, it's just not about infrastructure, but it is about economic development that we are talking about here. When President Xi came with this idea, it was not all roads linked to China. Yes. It was all roads linked to each other. There are more than 100 countries international organization and agencies that have already committed to a road that cut across all of these countries. Uh, and uh, China has signed already uh, projects worth more than $900 billion uh, and uh, established uh, 75 economic zone in 35 countries. So work, work, work is underway. As this project gets uh, uh, further and in terms of scale and in terms of presence, more countries are going to be involved. We've spoken about government initiatives. Uh, Professor Wang speaks about uh, NGOs, sovereign wealth funds. Um, and when you talk about financing, uh, clearly, I think there is an opportunity for Islamic financing around the world uh, to play a lead. Uh, and I say that for a very simple reason. If you look at the 65 countries that are within the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, close to 30 countries are predominantly uh, countries with Muslim populations. Now, Islamic uh, uh, finance uh, brings in um, a, a system that is um, asset-backed, that is um, uh, prohibits speculation, uh, uh, is built on the uh, risk-sharing aspects. So these uh, characteristics of Islamic finance um, are positive indicator. I think even before the initi initiative started in 2013, Dubai has played an active role Already. Uh, yes. within, within the trade routes with China. So, uh, you know, one of the most important partners for Dubai specifically, UAE as a whole, but Dubai specifically, uh, a trade partner is China. So if you just look at in the first half of 2018 itself, we've clocked about 69 billion of trade volumes with, uh, with, with China and, and the UAE. The Belt and Road Initiative has so much in it for everyone uh, that the private investment will find its way. And when that happens, uh, you know, you can elevate poverty because some of these countries yes, yes. that I'm talking about uh, are, are below the poverty line. Yes. Uh, so when you have an opportunity to be a part of those initiatives uh, and, and the countries are there right up again, uh, when you are part of these initiatives, you can bring uh, cost of uh, uh, goods down, you can elevate poverty, uh, you can uh, include uh, financial inclusion. We are globalizing economies over here. I think one should understand the impact that this initiative can have on the global economy. We are talking about trillions and trillions of dollars in GDP, but the global economy has a lot to gain. Islamic economy has a lot to gain because these are one third predominantly Islamic economies. So according to the McKinsey, uh, they have the report also predict that by 2050, the Belt Road Initiative will contribute 80% of the economic growth for the world. The Belt Road Initiative even initiated by Chinese government, but it need more localized by so many countries, not just the central government level, but the local and even uh, uh, grassroots level. I think that's the, basically uh, the future of that. One Belt, One Road Initiative is, to me, it is nothing but globalization of civilization.